as an undergrad masters or phd student it's very important that we publish our research papers quickly to either fulfill our degree requirement or boost our cv for the next career milestone we can't afford to wait a year or two just to get the decision on our work at the same time the journals that we choose should be reputed scopus indexed and free of cost too so how do we identify a journal that fulfills all these criteria well let's find out hi everyone i am neha agrawal i'm the founder of wise up and on this channel i make a lot of videos on how to publish our research paper so if this is a topic of interest to you you can subscribe to this channel and now let's understand how to choose scopus index journals from our field which are reputed publish quickly and that too for free when it comes to choosing a research journal there are usually multiple steps you need to follow to identify the best ones for you now the first and the easiest way to identify a journal is to go through your literature review this is because your literature review will also belong to the same field as the one you're writing your research paper on so the journal in which your literature has been published high chances that your paper will fall in that category as well now another thing you can do is visit the website of the famous publication houses in your field for example for science and engineering some of the famous publishers are ieee elsevier springer wiley sage taylor and francis etc all you need to do is go to their website and find out the journal recommender tool then you simply need to type down your topic name or paste your entire abstract in the search box and within seconds these publication houses would recommend the best journals for your research from their portfolio of journals that they have now if you wish to know in detail how to choose a journal then i've linked my video on top you can go through it now once you have a list of journals ready the next thing to do is check the reputation of the journal because if the journal is not reputed and it publishes quickly and free of cost it's not going to be of any use to us so to check the reputation of the journal we are going to find out whether it is scopus indexed or not because scopus only lists reputed and safe journals in its list so for this purpose what we will do is go on to the scopus website and then type our journal name in the search box we can also enter the issn number of that journal if we want which we can get from the journal website now if the name of our journal appears in the scopus list that means it's a reputed and safe journal and we don't have to worry about it because no fake or predatory journal name would be present in the scopus list secondly you can also look at some important metrics such as impact factor site score and percentile basically what the scopus do is that it divides all the journals in a quartile system where the top 25% of journals falls in the first quartile 25% to 50% of the journals fall in the second quartile 50% to 75% of journals falls in the third quartile and similarly the last 25% of the journal falls in the fourth quartile so if you go through the scopus list and you see that the journal has 95 percentile that means that your journal is better than 95 percent of the journals that are out there which means it is among the top 5 percentile so 100 minus 95 it is among the top 5 percentile of journals and therefore it falls under the first quartile so if you actually manage to publish your research paper in journals that belong to the first quartile category then there is nothing better than that similarly you can go through other metrics as well such as site score and impact factor which you can find on the journal website now once we have confirmed the reputation of the journal the next thing to check is the cost of publication now as a rule of thumb standard or subscription journals do not charge any money for the publication process this is because the money for publication usually comes from the readers and i'm sure you must have noticed is that if you go on the website of these famous publishers and you try to download a paper or read a paper there is usually a paywall present that prevents you from getting access to the entire paper so here the money is coming from the readers and that is why authors are not charged any fee now there are going to be only two cases when you need to pay money for the publication process 
First is when you go for open access publication. In case of open access publication, completely opposite to that of subscription journals, the money is taken from the authors for the publication process instead of the readers. The research papers are absolutely free of cost for the readers to read. And so in such a case, you will have to pay money for the publication process. But that does not mean that open access publication is not good, it is not reputed, it is fake. Please don't be under these misconceptions. In fact, if you want to get more clarity on what is the difference between subscription and open access journals, then I've made a detailed video on it which you can check out. Now the second case where a journal would ask for money if it is fake or predatory because that is what they do, right? They try to take money from you and then they publish the paper. But this we are already ruling out in the first step because if a journal is reputed, they are not going to be fake or predatory. So if a journal we've already checked is Scopus indexed, we know that it is reputed and it's not fake or predatory. So it will not ask us for money. Now what a lot of journals are doing nowadays is they are going for a hybrid model where they also give you subscription based publication and they also have open access publication available. Now it is up to you to decide whether you want to go for the subscription model or you want to go for the open access model because each have their own advantages and disadvantages. So if you go for the open access model then it's going to charge you money otherwise if you go for the subscription one you don't have to pay any fees. Okay so I hope this part about the cost of publication is very clear to you. So basically now the only thing that is left to find out is the publication time and this is where it can get a bit tricky. Now some journals they have become extremely transparent in their publication process. For example if I go to the Elsevier website and search for the journal Journal of Colloid and Interface Science immediately I can get all the details of the publication time here. For example, if you see very clearly they've written that they need four days for the first decision, which means that in four days they will let you know whether your research paper has been straight away rejected or is it going to move further in the peer review process. After that, they have told us is that for the first feedback, they need 22 days and the final duration of publication is 74 days from submission to acceptance, which means in less than three months of you submitting your research paper, you will know whether your paper is going to be published or not, which is pretty, pretty good. Similarly, the publication house, Springer also gives you some information about the time taken to give the initial first decision. Now for other journals, other publication houses, if they are not revealing this information very explicitly, one thing you can do is go and check the author guidelines because sometimes this publication time, publication duration is mentioned there. Otherwise, I have also found a hack for you. What you can do is go to the journal website and look at some recently published articles. Now you open that article and try to read a little bit more information about it. Some of these publishers will reveal as to when exactly had they received the paper and when exactly was this paper published. For example, if you see in this paper, they've told us this is the day when the paper was received and now this is the day when the paper has been accepted or published. Correct? Now, just by looking at this difference, we can get a rough estimation of the time they are taking for each publication. If you do this for five, six articles, you will know the rough time to publish a particular paper. Got it? So in this way, you can also find out the time taken to publish a research paper in a journal. So guys, in this way, you can ensure that the journals you are choosing are reputed, free of cost and published within your required timeline. Now, if you wish to learn in detail how to write a research paper, what are the different AI tools you can use to make this process simpler and go into detail of the publication process, then you can join me for my course on A to Z of research paper writing. To know more, the link is in the description and in the pinned comment. And now, thank you so much for watching this video and I wish you have a fantastic career ahead.